Hi, everybody. This is Cliff Price at the Trademark, and we're back for another conversation with one of our industry friends. And today I have Kim Bethea from Coker Hampton in Stuttgart, Arkansas. Hi, Kim. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, good afternoon, Cliff, and um, happy Tuesday. It is. Yes. It is indeed. Well, um, can you tell me a little about, uh, about your world-renowned uh, city? <laughs> well, I'm glad that you think it's world renowned. Most people, if they're familiar, which fortunately a lot of folks have an interest in waterfowl. So Stuttgart is affectionately known as the rice and duck capital of the world. And you won't have ducks unless you have rice. So um, that goes hand in hand. And we have a number of people that migrate, pardon the pun, to our little community for the 60 days of duck season that starts uh, close to Thanksgiving and runs through the end of January. So we have a lot of visitors at that time and um, feel so proud of that heritage here on what they call the Grand Prairie. Right. Uh, our community is only about 9,300 people. So it's a very small rural community but it is the heart of the Grand Prairie and it's probably the largest community on the eastern side of, Ar southeastern side of Arkansas. So right. I've heard a lot about it and I, I guess you get people from all over the world there. We actually do. Um, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, there are people that come every year without fail, um, visit the same hunting lodge um, every year. We also have a number of, you'll hear in town that there's a certain sporting celebrity or a um, musician that's come into town see, kind of secretly on the QT, but then everybody ends up finding out that they're here. Um, so th this is a pretty special place to get to come. A lot of it is about the, um, again, those people that come over and over again, you'd have a hard time getting a place at one of those lodges uh, because they kind of stay booked because it is a special time in our little town. Yeah, awesome. Well, now you're you're on Main Street, right in the middle of downtown. Uh, um, can you tell me a little bit about your store, your building, I, all, all that good stuff? I can. Our little building nestled in this little downtown makes for not very good cell, uh, cell and wireless service. We may find that out in the course of this conversation. Um, but the store itself has been here since 1928. So it's wow. nearly 100 years old. Same location. It's had a couple of different expansions. Um, it is a pharmacy wellness center as well as a gift store. Uh, we, in the last year, in fact, a year ago, right now, moved. We took in the store next door. So the wellness center is more of a 21st century pharmacy and wellness center. And the gift shop is in a space all of its own for the first time um, in its almost 100 year history, which has wow. been great on a number of levels. Now, did your family start the business or how, how did, how did y'all get started? My family actually did not. My, my parents are actually very good friends with the gentleman whose father started the store. There was okay. an actual Mr. Coker and a Mr. Hampton. I did not have the pleasure of knowing the, uh, the original Mr. Uh, Coker. His son is my, as I said, parents, really good friends. And so I know him quite well. He just retired about four or so years ago, um, had worked for us after we purchased it from him. And, but then the Mr. Hampton, I knew very well um, before he passed away. Yeah. So um, it, a lot of rich heritage here in our community. All right. So what makes your store unique? You've got a lot of competition around. Uh, what, what, what makes you different? You know, um, I think what makes us different is um, not, I think our selections are eclectic and curated, um, which is great. And that's what everybody is striving for. Um, I think what makes us different is the, the personalized attention, the real personalized attention that goes along with the sale and the veteran staff that I have. I have people, nobody's been here in, as far as um, in the capacity of sales associate has been here less than two years. Most everybody's wow. been here much longer. So when someone calls to ask us or comes in to ask for our assistance, 
we're making very thoughtful, knowledgeable decisions, not only based on our own knowledge, but being in a small community, quite often we know who someone's purchasing for. Yeah. And so I think that, um, that knowledge of our very loyal customer base is very different and only something you really can probably have more fully in a small community. That's, that's the beauty, honestly, of being in a small town is that you know people and you know most everybody. We know when someone's new to the store when they come in. Yeah. You know, all it's about customer of, service. It's it's all about customer service. And so I think that knowledgeable, and we're not just selling a gift, we're selling what we think somebody's actually gonna like based on what we know. And that knowledge of those customers makes I think what we do even more special. Mm-hmm. And again, kind of that real um uh, dedicated community service. I mean, uh, not community service, but customer service sure. um, that we're, you know, I always, as, as do the rest of my staff, think very thoughtfully, not, we're not just selling something. We're selling something that somebody's going to really like because we know them and we know that's what they like. Now, uh, can you talk a little bit about some of your product categories, price points? What, what, what are some of the best things that you carry in your store? Well, several of those things obviously are from the Cliff Price showroom. Well, I hope so, happy, but uh... you know, which we're happy to say, and I, I don't say that because we don't have everything. Not, it's, <laughs> it's not because you and I are visiting, but one of the best things that we have is Michelle Designs. It's an incredible line. Uh, we we had it for a time, and then and then didn't have it because of some. Um, if, you know, finagling within the community, um, but we were able to get it back uh, about a year and a half ago, and it's one of our best lines that that so happens to be available in your showroom. But the price points for that line in particular are great because it 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 checks all the boxes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's affordable. Um, it is beautiful product that actually serves a function and a purpose. So it's not just something, I mean, people don't collect things like they first did um, when I got in the business almost uh, 20, let's see, almost 25, right at 25 years ago. People collected things when I got into the business. They don't collect things anymore. <laughs> you, you, you know that. I know, I know that. that. Um, you know it well, because you, your sure has been in existence the entire time that I've been in business. So I think that type of line is super important to a business because again, and then the cleanliness piece, I mean, Michelle design works and again, checks a really important box this last year. It's all about clean. So that's great. Those price points are wonderful. Um, Other lines that we do well with um, are uh, again, it's all function based products. So like Vera Bradley does very well for us because Mm -hmm. their travel accessories, again, maybe not the best thing this last year because there hasn't been as much traveling, but those are beautiful products that even though they're a little bit more expensive, they are, they stand the test of time. You're going to grow tired of those products before the product wears out. It's machine washable. It's sustainable. They're doing a lot of sustainable fabrics. Now people, even if they're, they're not the most, um, let's say they're not big, um, recyclers and super, super focused on eco-friendly products. They feel good to purchase something that they know, um, is, being um, is a sustainable type product. So I think that's a good price point for us. Baby is, is a, you know, big segment for us of our business. We have a little baby boutique. So um, we do, though we do a baby boutique, we don't do a lot of clothing um, unless it's giftable clothing. So for me, it's all driven by um, celebrating everything in life and it being, um, it, it being a variety of price points, but it meets strictly a gift, um, mm-hmm. a gift need, yeah. if that makes sense. No, no, no doubt. Okay. Uh, are, are there key price points that you really tried to stick to or? You know, and that kind of evolves, like everything about our business evolves. Um, but I think, you know, it's super important to find those really good, attractive gifts that are 15 to 20 $20 where you can find them. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly the sweet spots, probably 30 to 40 at this point, which is honestly about $10 higher than it was when I first got into Great. business. Yeah. Um, so that's the sweet spot. And there's a lot available in that if you're just being very choosy and, right. and, and careful. Um, so that's, I think that 
explains it pretty well. And then there's obviously a need for some gifts that are higher, but, um, and we sell some of those things. Um, but I think that sweet spot's 30 to $40. Now, now, since you've been in business, 20, you've been doing it 25 plus years, you've seen a lot of changes. How often are, do you really revamp the store um, and really transition categories? Because it, I mean, this is, this is ever changing. It is ever changing. You know, I think it, to some degree, you're doing it every year. Um, you don't have to reinvent the wheel every year, but you've got to keep evolving. And sometimes your competition, you know, requires that. Mm -hmm. I, I am not afraid to ditch something and move on to something else when I feel like um, if there's been a lot of imitation or, and I don't say that in a braggadocious manner, but in my downtown area, it's about a three block area and that's where the majority of the, of the stores are located. Mm -hmm. So if I feel like my neighbors are doing things that are so similar, then I'm, I'm going to I'm going to move on because I think we've got to carve out our own lane. I think it's important that we are very good business neighbors and, and provide real integrity about that and our professionalism. So um, I think though, in order to be a standout store, when I feel like the competition is doing things that are so similar, then I'll, I'll cut and run and start doing something else. And yeah. I, and I think what that means when you're in business is um, you know, every year you're evolving. There's probably, um, I've probably had five or six really revolutionary times where we like really got rid of a lot of things All and right. really did something different, which I think is what you're asking. So it's a combination, I think of both those things, but that constant change, it's happening even when you don't realize it. And what I, here's the funniest thing that I think most anybody that's been in business for any length of time five plus years can, can identify with is that when my husband and I got into this business back in 1997, I thought I would get things going. It would be a well-oiled machine. And then <laughs> I had young children and I thought I'd be able to kind of work part-time, be a bit more of a mom. Um, what I'm finding is what a stupid thought that was. <laughs> that, and and I, I know you identify with this. I'm working harder now than I ever have. Um, my kids are of course grown now and out of the house, all three of them. Um, so that's, that's what makes a store though, really good is when their owner and the staff understands that you got to keep reinventing yourself so that you are attractive to your customers. Cause you're the, everybody's got a loyal customer base. You're going to have some people that come in and out, but for the most part, you're, you're promoting yourself to the same group of loyal people all the time. And they don't want to see the same thing yeah. either. No. They want exciting new. So that's, that's what you have to do. So you have to just work harder and harder. Well, you just hit on something. This is a lot of work. <laughs> Why it's do you a do lot it? Of work. I mean, you know, running, a, running a retail store is, is, is tough. I, I so don't why, why, do you, why do you really do it? What's your I, passion? Yeah, I don't think most people really understand that. I I love serving people. Um, I have a heart for service. Um, I'm probably not at times the very best manager. Um, I want to, I, I, I mean, I love my staff. I try to take care of my coworkers. Um, I probably at times aren't as good at some of those things because I'm so driven by um the, you know, the, the service to customers above and beyond, um, giving them a reason to, to come here. So I, I really like, I like serving the customers and I yeah. love being a good coworker, but the customers are key. And so I, that's why I do it is, is for them. Cause if it weren't for that, if it weren't for them, it wouldn't really be worth doing. And without yeah. them, we couldn't do it anyway. That, that's so, so true. That's yeah. so true. So well, have you seen any recent trends people. that that you've really jumped on that that you really think are going to be that next uh, category? Um, you know, to some degree, yes. I think um, even though we're not an outdoor store, and there's a, um, I've had some increased competition in that area, so I've kind of shifted. I got rid of some things we used to carry because I think they're being carried um, in a more appropriate place. 
but just sort of um, some outdoor entertaining things. And when I say that, even in things like um, solo stove is a, is a new hot item. Mm -hmm. And so I just bought into solo stove because I think people are spending that more time at home that hopefully is going to change to some degree as things open up a bit more. But um, I think people are, are, I think there's this trend toward really making our homes um, and our outdoor spaces just very nice, comforting um, places to be almost like a, our home has always been our respite, but I think we're seeing that more and more. And I think because of what we've endured in the last year, I think you're going to continue to see that go on. And so I think we have to find products that, that provide for that respite in a cool, chic, you know, mm -hmm. kind of way. Yeah. So it can't just be average stuff that you can find anywhere. It needs to be kind of specialized things that provide that, that special, um, you know, she, she at your home. Hey, there you go. I don't know if that's a good. No, I, know, I think that's good. terrific. I, I, I know we've seen a, a, a nice trend of, 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 you know, outdoor entertaining seems to be you know, one of those uh, expanding categories. I mean, everybody's spending more time in the backyard grilling or, or yeah. just hanging out, you know, uh, you know, just doing their thing to enjoy the family yes. and, and, and friends. And, and I think that's uh, definitely something that, that, you know, we think will continue. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, the last be... 12 months have been crazy. How yeah. has the shutdown, COVID, everything changed Ooh. your business? Well, um, the interesting thing is I have is I have three stores. Um, so I have two other stores with my sister and one is an apparel business. So that you can imagine has been um, that as a store itself has been severely impacted because people aren't going places and a lot of people aren't even I mean, they're not going to work and they're not going to church and they're not going to activities. Um, that's also, you know, been evident at this store too. Um, I think what we saw at first was that there was this great, um, a real cognizance by the consumers here locally to really shop locally that first like three months. Mm -hmm. it was, even June, which is usually a very slow time was a really pretty good month for us. But now it's like, you know, we saw continued rise in the COVID cases. So there was um, um, less foot traffic. Um, and it's like people have kind of forgotten that. And I think no matter where you're located, whether you're in a small town or a big city, we need people to remember that again, um, that it's still super important to support those people that you that those little stores that you love and find important um, because it's gotten really easy for people, I think, to sit at their computer and forget how important that is to support those yeah. stores. Um, and, and so because I think that's been forgotten, the last several months have been, been hard. I mean, I, I think that's a, I think that mentality of shopping, um, I think there's a need for all kinds of shopping venues, but I think we need for people to really understand in your community what small businesses do in any community um, and that when they're not supported, they can't support the things then that are uh, of interest to you, like your ball teams. And I mean, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know, what I, what I hate is that it's, it's been tough to give in some ways because we have been so slow. Right. Right. But I, now, you, I see, you have used social media to kind of offset some of that. Can you tell me a little bit about how you've used it and how that has changed your business? Um, you know, I think the beauty of social media is it allows you to get out there in some ways um, to people that is super important. Um, it may be the only way that they get information. The flip side of social media is that it's a plethora of other information from other people too. So you've, I think what you have to do, um, and I think most anybody that's using it understands this, you have, it can't be just about selling a product. Right. It has to be about engaging people in what you do, why you do it. Um, let them get to know a little bit about you and your staff. Um, for a lot of the reasons that you've elected to do what you're doing. And I'm so delighted that you asked me to join you for a conversation. I think that people need, um, 
people are being sold a product all the time in, in, I mean, social media and in other ways. So I think that's one piece of it at why it's so important and to engage people in what you're doing um, and not only selling the product, but I think you've got to find also that, that really, again, kind of a sweet spot with, you can't bombard people with too much information. Um, And it's also as a retailer, as well as a showroom owner, How do people get their information? Is it all social media? Is it, how do you use the other means for which you have to advertise and get your name out there? Because back when I first got into the business, you just had newspaper and radio. That's it. Or primarily in my market, newspaper and radio. And those things worked really well. Well, all of that's really changed. And yet for as many ways as we have to communicate, I still have people say, well, I didn't know you were doing that. Or, and so it's like, okay, how do we, how do we do that? But I do think with social media, the huge way to have gotten the message out was to find that that balance between selling a product, but letting them know what's neat and special about, in, in my case, my business. Um, and that's what, what we all have to do is, is um, it provides us with such a great tool if it's used correctly um, in finding that that just not selling product. In fact, I think sometimes it's refreshing for people to see us not sell something because there's so much being pushed um, in that way. So I think you've got to really think outside of the box. Yeah. I think sometimes it's just a matter of having fun with it, you know, and having a good time and, and, you know, showing people that you're, you're a great place uh, to, to shop. Yeah. And uh, not all about selling things. You want to, you want to want to have a good time too. That's right. That, that it's, that, that you're silly, that you're fun, that, um, yeah, I mean, all those things. And you you Um, pull in your employees to, to do it as well. Right. I mean, you, you you do use a variety of, uh, your staff. I think it's really critical, um, for them to see all the faces, um, that they would, that they would encounter if they were able to come in and see us physically or when they choose to come and see us physically. Um, because I may not always be on the sales floor. I might be upstairs working in the office. So they need to be just as familiar with Michaela or Cindy or Ashley or Tanika or Janet as they are myself. So I think getting those other faces out there, I think, um, I mean, using any means whatsoever with your social media to make them feel like they know you, they already know the store. Um, they, they even know, the per, some of the personalities, um, you know, Cindy Lou Who is one we've used a lot, um, okay. and Cindy Shenanigans, and we've had people, literally, this is this is a true story, had women follow us around, a group of girls who we've gotten to know very well, they're hysterical from Oklahoma, but followed us around market one day by our post while we were at market, and ended up finding us into the afternoon and they were like, we've done everything y'all have done because you were having so much fun. Cause we would like get in props at showrooms and pretend we were driving this prop car or whatever. And they just, they almost acted like she was a celebrity. They wanted her autograph. It was hysterical. <laughs> so, I mean, again, we were just being silly while we shopped, but it, it works. But that's one thing I've noticed when y'all are here, y'all have a good time. Look, I mean, look, and you know, it, look, it, it I mean, this, we're, this isn't brain surgery. I mean, this is the gift business. It's, it's fun. You got to have fun with it. And I think that's, really, that's, yeah. that's the key. It is really hard work to buy, but if you're not having fun when you're buying, as you think about what your customers want, if I, if I'm not doing, if I'm not having fun doing that anymore, I probably don't need to do this any yeah. longer. And because then I'm super excited about what we've got coming in. Um, you know, in Glory Haas, or as I've already talked about, Michelle Design Works, or gosh, I could go on and on about things well, I'm excited about. Now, buying, you know, this past year, has has that changed for you? Did, did you go to shows? A, a little, uh, a little. I, I was at the show in January of 20, mm-hmm. and then obviously I did not elect to come in September. I did come to do just a few things in October. I felt very safe. I had intended to come in January of 21, um, but I had a, a death in my family um, a, about that time. So it just, the timing wasn't right, but I am coming in two weeks and okay. I, am, I am 
stoked beyond what I can explain. Um, it's been so hard not to come to market. I, I don't know. Market is such a great tool. I, I can't imagine not coming and seeing things in person, seeing displays, getting to visit with um, other retailers on the shuttle to and from the hotel. Or right. I, mean, it, I mean, it's just, it is so important. Um, and I love I love what you and and a few other showrooms that are my you know faves that I've kind of stuck with all these years do to not only provide us with all of this inspiration, but you um, you make us feel good about being there. It's almost like returning back to friends. I mean, I you know I I just I can't wait. I can't wait yeah. for two more weeks. I'm not the least bit worried about it. Um, it's it's just time. I think the building did a great job making everybody feel comfortable. I mean, we didn't know what to expect in January, but I was I was really pleasantly surprised, um, and it was just great to see people. I know. <laughs> right? the people, I mean, this is the people business, and and uh, you know, I, th this is great connecting by Zoom, but you know, there's nothing better than seeing somebody in person and, and working together and just just having a good a good time. No kidding. And, I mean, like, uh, I'll probably hug you and probably everybody else I see when I get to market because I, I can't I honestly can't wait. It's been well, too it'll, long. it'll be fine. I, I you know, it's it's uh, I mean, it's it's great to be kind of back back in the game. Um, you know, it feels um, it's hard to put a feeling. It's hard to put a finger on the the feelings that I think any of us have about it. I, I think most, most especially because nobody thought when this started right out a year ago that we were still going to be in this yeah. position. I 30 mean, days, maybe. <laughs> you know, I thought six to eight going. weeks. And so, I mean, yeah. So I think um, I, I, I felt very safe when I was there in October. As I said, I had every intention of returning in January. It, you know, life just didn't work out for me to be there or I would have been there with bells on. So I, I, I am over the moon about coming back in a couple awesome. of weeks. I can't wait. Well, can we talk a little bit about, you've got a great reputation for your, your displays and, and merchandising. Can we? take a little spin through your store to look at a few of your displays and talk a little bit about how you do it and what you kind of focus on when you're putting something together. Sure. We'll, um, I've already mentioned it's an old building and okay, well, we're gonna try. so we're going to give try. it a we're try. Have, right? may, may stop, but uh, let's, let's give it a shot. We'll do some walking around and see, of course we're checking in some freight. So we may walk past an area that doesn't look so good. But um, obviously, when you're buying, um, you're thinking about where it's going to go. Um, you can't help but do that. Um, I think it's great. Um, and Michelle Design Works that I've already mentioned is, um, you know, just one of my favorites because they're so good about, let's see if I can turn there. Oh, look at that. They're awesome. They're so great about, you know, displays and offering, you know, with product displays. So a, a display like this, and we've even done um, and incorporated just some of the entertaining wear into the display, just so that somebody can see it together and mm -hmm. that they might take a set of melamine bowls and put them with, you know, some hand soap and a great towel, um, but try to put cleaning and everything kind of where categorically where it's just really easy a one-stop kind of shop to come i've got all the cleaning supplies in one place um i've got all the um hand soaps and lotions and personal body products in one place so that's a real i love that because that's just you line it up it's beautiful presentation because of the 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 time and effort that they put into their product development as far as the design and all. But then there's other areas where obviously like everybody else, we are putting a menagerie of things together. And so when you're buying it, I don't know if you can tell much yeah, about, yeah. you know, we've incorporated a lot of different things so that most people need ideas. So if they can see it set up, I mean, you know, you need a combination of all of those things in store. Um, and I think mixing it up is always good again, because it plants seeds, give people, gives people ideas of what they might do in their own homes or how to put the gift together. Um, this is another display, some cross merchandising um, with another line that we do really well with. Yeah, that looks great. Um, 
incorporating um, a few other things in their brewmates, another line that, my gosh, how, how fabulous has that been? It's been pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And so we pr pretty much have that just kind of lined up um, so that it's by category and coloring. And um, that way, when somebody comes in and they're looking for, you know, a, a wine, uh, coffee tumbler, I mean, you could do a couple of things with their uncorked, all the uncorked are together where they can look at it and pick the color. And then we do a lot of personalization on those some vinyl um, mm -hmm. lettering on those. So um, it's just how much personalization do you do? Do you, do you do a lot of personalization? We actually do. Now, I never invested in a monogramming um, machine. I've got luckily a couple of people in town that I just kind of, we take it and we make maybe a dollar to deliver it over there and get it right. monogrammed. Um, but that's just an extra service that's important to offer. But with our vinyl lettering, um, we do an awful lot of it and we did the heat press machine so we can press that on things, right, uh, right. bags, shirts, um, but we do quite a bit of that and that ebbs and flows, but particularly at graduation and um, you know, that those spring gifting occasions sure. as well as at Christmas. And we try to make up some things in advance with just different initials or sayings. Um, and so that's been a real, that's been a real good thing for our business and it wasn't super expensive yeah. and doesn't uh, personnel wise I've got a lady that works for us here and there but she comes in a couple times a week and does it for us just sort of on her own time so okay I didn't have to pull somebody you know off the floor so to speak to do that now merchandising do you do all the merchandising or do you have key employees that that do it all oh heavens no I um, <laughs> I have I have visions in my head but um I was gonna say I've got some men's things here um I don't know if the sunlight's going to get us there. Let me come around here. You can kind of see just a menagerie of men's things. Oh, yeah. No, I have um, I have really talented ladies who do most of the merchandising. I may have an idea and I may take some pictures when I'm at market, but um, I've got um, I've got girls that can put that together and I'm very, very grateful. Um, I'm, I would be really good at, at uh, the Michelle designs displays. Cause I could, I could do that, <laughs> but all this other stuff that may have been hard to see in the displays where it's, you know, a combination of different lines and, and gift ideas that's solely attributed to my very talented girls. That's great. My they won't let me touch anything here. The only thing I'm allowed to do is open a box and that's, that's it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just probably make up. I'm a, you know, when I come down here and get into anything, they probably wish I would just go back upstairs to where my, my desk is. Yeah. Cause I come down here and I like make everything a hot mess and I start and I have real focus issues. And so I'll start on one thing. And before you know it, I'm over in another area of the store and, and I'm sure they're just, they probably think there's medication for that and I should be well, on that's, it. So. That's just the entrepreneur, entrepreneurial spirit running through you. You just, maybe, you know, maybe it is. That's just the way that, it works. <laughs> I'm hopeful that that's an, a trait that other retailers can identify with is that I do think that um, entrepreneur people are constantly, we're constantly thinking because we have to. Yeah. We yeah, have that, to. That, that's so true. Now, yeah. now, what about promotions, sales, special events? Would y'all y'all do some things that are unique uh, to your store? Well, I th I think so. Um, you know, um, everyone does kind of a lot of the typical things, but one of the things that we do that's have been a real game changer for us in that spring gifting season is is that we do a graduation registration. And we're kind of known for that. So okay. the local high school graduates come in and they register. I mean, we go around the store just like they were getting married wow. or they were having a baby. And yeah. we do, we've got, because we have wedding registries and a baby registry, but they register just as if, um, you know, they were going to need all, I mean, you know, just like those people. So they sure. write down anything, we write down anything that they would like. And um, the benefit of a small town is that people are incredibly generous. Um, and I can remember as a, as a high school graduate myself, the sheer volume of gifts, I never knew that people did that until I graduated from high school. And so 
people are so generous and in small towns, you know, so many kids. So it's, it's crazy. So somebody will come in with a list of like 12 gifts. And so we'll work through the registries and it, and they can even just call us and say, I want to spend $20 of student and we'll take care of it. We'll, you know, do their enclosure card. We'll register the gift. We'll wrap it. We'll deliver it. Um, I mean, it's just from start to finish, they can acknowledge that very special occasion and they don't have to do anything but make a call to the very talented staff at the yeah. store to take care of it. And they can guarantee that it's something the child is going to want and use because they've come in and actually given us some idea of what they want. Yeah, that's, so that's a great a really, idea. It's been really good for us. It's, it's just kind of a smart thing and some communities that might not work as well, but that's been huge for us. Um, we also do just a lot of gift boxes and custom instead of, um, we don't do as much pre prefab or pre-done. We let people pick that out. We've also um, begun to use, um, and this is not so promotion, promotion driven as it is just another way to, to reach customers and give them the way to, to reach us. Um, is we've got a sales cell number. So they don't have to go through the main lines. They can, if it's 10 o'clock at night and they've been on our Facebook account and they see that we've posted something they're interested in and they want us to FaceTime them the next morning or they want us to just send that item out to someone. Um, I know if I can't do it before 6 a.m. or after nine or 10 o'clock at night and it is a personal thing like that, I, I'm probably not doing it or I'm going to do it in a manner that I can do it at that time of the night. Yeah. or that time of the morning. So um, sometimes there's little coupons with which to do that. Um, but we do also, as far as promotions, um, one thing that I, we just started doing this year that, uh, that I feel proud about is we wanted to start being able to offer cocktails to people while they shopped. Not everybody wants a cocktail when they shop, but I know I really appreciate getting to have a beer when I come into the showroom and shop with you. Um, so we decided we would do events and they would, in conjunction with the events, whether it's a little lady side out or we're um, featuring two or three lines like Michelle Design Works and all of our you know, clean product, COVID clean product event, um, we'll offer charity cocktails. And so someone can get a glass of wine or a beer and we usually will do kind of a specialty cocktail and a mocktail version of it for those that want uh, you know to have that participation but they don't want the alcohol but they donate like a minimum of three dollars and the proceeds from the charity cocktails at that event goes toward one of our very favorite charities here locally so um, that's been really fun. And people have really, um, people have really gotten behind that. I mean, we'll offer that for like two hours during um, a little event, um, an after hours event typically from say five to seven. And in that time we've made right at a hundred or a little more each time for any of the little local charities. I mean, that we've designated. Wow. So that's been kind of fun. And people like coming and having a cocktail while they shop and maybe sure. saving a little on something. Just like market. <laughs> just like market. Yeah. Just like market. So again, just anything that I think um, makes people feel special. They don't, you're not, you're not telling them they have to come in and have a drink if that's not what they want to do. But I think giving, people feel good about giving. It's just right. like we talked earlier about sustainable product. You might not be the, the biggest conservationist um, alive, but you feel good to buy something that you think is good to the earth. Sure. Um, and so to have a cocktail while you shop and know that you're gonna benefit the local um, humane society or um, an entity that raises money and does for cancer patients, well, who doesn't feel good about that? Yeah. So that's anyway, that's been a fun, that's been a fun new promotion. That's terrific. So let's, what do you see in the future for retail? I mean, it's a, the, we talked about things always changing and I, you know, what's next? I think the constant is that it's always changing. And so um, I think what, I think the toughest part greater than it's ever been. Um, as I said, there's more ways 
ways to communicate than ever before. But I think as retailers, we're going to have to find that area where we can make sure our message is, is gotten across, where people know what we're doing, they're intrigued with what we're doing, um, and that I believe the greatest, what's still going to be the greatest difference maker for an independent store is that personalized, specialized service, because that's really the only way we can kind of, that that's what makes us different. I mean, right. I'm not a, against shopping at big box stores. I'm not against shopping online. I have to do some of those things sometimes too, but I think where I most love to shop is where they know me, they know my name, um, they know what I like. I don't hound customers about it. Uh, you know, if something comes in, I, I, I don't get on the phone and make people feel like I think they have to come in and shop. But if I know someone loves Michelle Design Works and they have loved um, a specific item and in that fragrance, they've come out with something else, then I may not call them, but the next time they come in, I'm going to be sure they know it. Right. Um, I just, I, service, I think it comes down to service. Yeah. I really do, because um, the categories themselves are going to change. Um, we're going to keep evolving and product mix and what we what we do based on what we feel like customers want. But I think the only way we're different from a big box or a, an internet is you don't get you don't get the great that great touch, the feel, the 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 fact that your sales person knows you right. and um, takes great care of you. And you know, when you hand it off to her that she's gonna take care of it, you can't necessarily get that um, any place else. You can't get a think. connection uh, from uh, Amazon, can you? <laughs> I, no, no, you can't. So I think we've got to keep appealing yeah. to the five senses and, and offering that impeccable service that goes well above what anybody else is offering yeah no doubt i guess they, so i don't know if that's, yeah in general there's not that much changing it's all about customer service and and taking care of the customer and that's that's really the bottom line yeah i think when you peel all the other stuff away it, it really comes down to taking care of people and when you take care of people they have a tendency to come back yeah um you know i think I think there's a real appreciation. I know myself, I, I like to send flowers sometimes. And I love that there are two florists in my community. I use both of them. They're both friends. But I know when I walk out of there, they're going to do exactly what I've asked. They're going to make it special. I don't have to tell them how to do it. I don't have to tell them how to create the arrangement. Just like when somebody leaves here and we offer complimentary gift wrap, that it's going to go out of here. It's going to look great. It's going to have the enclosure card inside of it. I mean, the, the attention to detail and that service, you don't get that anywhere else. So that's what I think we have to keep. That's, keep focused on. Stay the course. So, yeah. Well, Kim, thank course. you so much for doing this. I, I really enjoyed the discussion. I think you, you shared some great information for everybody. Oh, uh, I can't so. wait to see you uh, in two weeks. I can't wait to see your face <laughs> either. And I can't wait to be in your showroom. And, and um, yeah, so I just, I appreciate being asked and I hope that I, that I provided something oh, of great. some interest, but um, I do appreciate it. And I, I'm, um, I'm thankful for partners like you and, and um, just look forward to a lot of more years ahead. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks again. Thanks so and much. And have a great afternoon. Yeah. Happy Tuesday afternoon.